All right, hey everybody, uh, welcome back. It's Captain Awesome here, your best math teacher ever. Um, we're gonna talk about lesson 4.3 and we're modeling arithmetic sequences. So we're reviewing, or we're adding to what we have already talked to in our last lesson, 4.2, which was um, creating arithmetic sequence formulas. So you were, you were using our explicit formula from that last video and you were substituting in and simplifying into our formula. So now we're gonna take real world-ish types of situations and we're gonna apply the previous concepts that we, we've been doing. Okay, so um, our first problem, a carnival game uh, awards a prize if Karen can shoot a basket. The charge for the first shot is $5. So five bucks for the first shot and then $2 for each additional shot. Karen needs six shots to win a prize. What is the total amount Karen uh, spent to win the prize? So she spent, so she did six shots total. She, um, so our first one, her first shot, what was the cost of her first shot? Well, if you look through, the, it says the first charge, it's five bucks, so our first charge is five. Okay, and then we can write that as an ordered pair so in our x and y coordinate as one, five, okay? And so our next shot is two, but it was no longer two, it was no longer five bucks per shot for the second shot, it is two dollars for this shot. So the cost, the total cost for the first and second shot now is seven bucks, okay? And so we're gonna write that as an ordered pair, two, seven. All right, after that, we're, we're now counting by twos. So our third shot is five, seven. You can see our common difference here is gonna be nine. And so let me close that parenthesis. We got three, nine. And so our fourth, fifth, sixth. So we're gonna have 11, 13, and 15 as our next our cost for the next one so the first one is five and we're adding two each time after that five plus two is seven seven plus two is nine nine plus two is eleven eleven plus two is thirteen thirteen plus two is fifteen and then we're going to write them as ordered pairs so we got four eleven we've got five thirteen six fifteen so we're I, this don't be con too confused about where i'm getting this from it's just six fifteen six fifteen five thirteen five thirteen four eleven four eleven Three nine, three nine, okay? And then we have this nice little graph over here. And you can see right now that it is not labeled. So we need to label it. Our Y values or our, um, our range is going to be our costs. Cost in dollars. So go ahead and put cost in dollars. And our X values are gonna be number of shots. And now we can graph them. So our first one is one five, so over one, up five. Second one is two seven, over one, or over two, up seven. And then over three, up to nine. It's a little bit hard to see. And then four, up to 11. And then five, up to 13. And you can see we're creating a straight line here. And up to 15. So there, this is a, the graphic model of our carnival game and the number of shots that it took Karen to win a prize. So it cost her $15 to win this prize. So Karen spent $15. Okay, so what is the domain value? What domain values make sense for this situation? Well, our domain values that make sense are the number of shots that it took. So again, we're going to practice that little little bracket there and we've got one two three four five six so those of you wondering why I didn't start at zero at this point we didn't start at zero because if you had zero shots you're not gonna pay any money right you're not gonna play this carnival game and not shoot it shoot at least one basket so that's why we're not starting at zero so our domain that makes sense is one through six and you're not gonna take half of a basketball shot that doesn't make sense either. Okay, so how do you know which variable is the independent variable and which variable depends uh, is 
is the dependable variable or the depend variable in a real world situation involving arithmetic sequences. So the independent variable indicates the term. Okay. And it's usually increasing by one unit. Okay, so it indicates the term and it's increasing by one unit. Usually. Okay, so in this case, it was the number of shots and we were adding one each time, right? Okay, so the dependent variable The one that depends on how many shots you take. So if she made it in five, she would spend $13. If she made it in four, she spends 11. The dependent variable is the, it's gonna end up being the total or it's a, con, there is a constant rate of change that is the common difference. The dependent variable changes by the common difference. not common, common difference. Okay, okay. so if we try another one here, we've got Anna buys, a raff, buys one raffle ticket for $4, and each ticket after that costs $2. Complete the graphic table below. Okay, so we're gonna start at one ticket, two tickets, three tickets, four tickets, five tickets, six tickets. So this is, our graph is gonna end up representing six tickets. The first ticket, Cost four bucks, okay, four dollars, and in an order to pay, there would be one four. After that, we're talking about a two dollar difference, so this should be four, six, so four plus two is six, six plus two is eight, eight plus two is 10, 10 plus two is 12, 12 plus two is 14. And so we got all our ordered pairs here now, six, or two six, we've got three, eight, four, 10, 5, 12, and then 6, 14, okay? And we have over 1, up 4. That's our first one. Over 2, up 6. That's our second one. Over 3, up 8. Over 4, up 10. And then we've got 12 and 14. So there's our straight line, okay? So how many raffle tickets can she buy with 12 bucks? Well, 12 bucks is 5 tickets. Boom, right there. And then our last question here on this page we have, write the explicit rule that this situation represents, then determine the value of f of 10 and tell what it represents for this situation. Okay, so if you remember our explicit rule, this is the one that starts with f of n, so think back of, to 4.2, f of n equals f of one. Let me get it to our middle of our page here. So f of n equals f of one plus d times n minus one. Okay, and you're gonna be replacing these two things. So f of n equals f of one, well f of one is four, and our common difference each time. So four plus two is six, six plus two is eight, eight plus two is 10, so our common difference is two. We've got n minus one. And we can simplify this to f of n equals four plus two n minus two. So I'm distributing this, two times n is two n, two times negative one is negative two. We have f of n equals two n plus two. So four minus two is positive two. So now we have our explicit rule, and this is the rule that we're actually gonna substitute 10 in for. So remember we said figure out what f of 10 is? Well, we didn't have a chart here that is f of 10, and we don't have a, a graph that goes up to f of 10. So you have to actually substitute in your f of 10 here. So we're gonna say f of 10 equals 
2 times 10 plus 2. Okay, so we've replaced, now we're working with our formula and we're replacing it with our 10. And so we have f of 10 equals 20. 2 times 10 is 20 plus 2. So we have f of 10 equals 22. Okay. And so if you're going to buy 10 tickets, it's going to cost you 22 bucks. Okay. All right, so let's flip it over the back side. What do we got here? Okay, so it says construct an explicit rule. So remember when you're talking about explicit rule, that's our F of N. So I'm just gonna rewrite the explicit rule up here. F of N equals F of one plus D times N minus one. If you're used to subscript notation, it would be A sub N equals A sub one plus D times, hold on one second, let me make sure I get my subscript notation correct. Having a little bit of a brain fart here. Make sure I get it right. Don't want to tell you anything wrong. Plus D times N minus one. Minus one. So either notation will work. I'm gonna stick with function notation because clearly I remember that one better. Okay, so the graph below shows the height in inches of a stack of boxes on a table as the number of boxes uh, as the number of boxes in the stack increases. Find the height of the stack with seven boxes. Okay, so we can see we have number of boxes one, two, three, four, five. And then we have the height of our boxes going 34, 51, 68, 85. Okay. Well, I asked for seven boxes, right? I don't see seven over here. So that means you've got to figure out what a common difference is first, and you've got to know what f of one is. Well, f of one is still pretty easy to pick out. So f of one is going to equal, well, it's your very first term, 34. So we've got that one, pretty straightforward, okay? Nothing crazy there. The second one, you just have to find your common difference. So that means the second one minus the first one. So 51 minus 34. So 51 minus 34. And I'm getting that just from my two common, my two second, or the second one minus the first one. So 51 minus 34. Just wanna make sure I'm doing my math right here. And we've got 17, okay? So our common difference, or D equals 17. Well, now I have everything I need for my explicit formula. So we can say f of n equals 34 plus 17 times n minus 1. So I just replaced our 17 with d, our f of 1 with 34, and we're going to simplify our formula here or our explicit rule 17n minus 17 and then 34 minus 17 is actually 17 so we have 17n plus 17 and now I want to know what the seventh box is so we're going to take this formula that we just created for our problem or our function for our problem we're going to substitute and we're going to find the seventh term so we have 17 times seven plus 17, okay? And so f of seven equals, well, 17 times seven is, well, shoot, I can't do that in my head. We got 49, seven times seven is 49, and seven times one is seven plus four, which is 111, or I'm sorry, uh, 119, plus 17 equals 136, okay? And so the height of 17 boxes or I'm not seven, but the height of seven boxes is 136 inches. Okay, so on the test, I need to see I need to see that in a complete sentence. So make sure you write your answer in the complete sentence. Okay, we're not going to do the next, we're not going to do all the next three because I'm already at 15 minutes here. But we are going to do one more 
just to make sure that you guys are not, I'm not losing you and you get to see another example, okay? I wanna make sure we get at least one more example in our video. Okay, so last example I'm gonna go over in the video. Ruby signed up for a frequent flyer program. She receives 3,400 frequent flyer miles for the first round trip. She takes and 1,200 frequent flyer miles for in it, all additional round trips. How many frequent flyer miles will Ruby have after five round trips? Okay, so her first round trip is going to be N, and we're gonna go F of N, and we're just gonna make a little T-chart here. We know what one is. One, she gets 3,400 miles. Okay. Two, well, every frequent flyer after that, she gets 1,200. Okay. Oh, not 1,200. It's plus 1,200. So it should be 4,600. Sorry about that. Plus 1,200 is what I, what I meant. And then you've got three and then 5,800. Okay. So we have our common difference We, know we is going to be 1,200. We can pick that out on the problem. We really didn't need to do this to figure out what our common difference is, but it is 1,200 in case you needed to see that. The second thing you need to see is F of 1 equals 3,400. That's our very first term right there. Okay. So we've got the two things that we need to make a, an explicit rule in our F of N. So I'm going to stop writing the formula down for you since you've seen it a couple of times already in this video. So f of n equals our 3,400 for our first term, okay, plus our common difference of 1,200 times n minus 1, okay. And we're going to simplify this. So f of n equals 3,400 plus 1,200n minus 1,200. And so we've got f of n equals 1,200n. And then 3,400 minus 1,200 is 2,200. Okay, so now we have our explicit rule. And the question said, how many miles will she have after five round trips? So we're gonna substitute five in for N. And we've got 1200 times five plus 22. So I encourage you to pause the video at some point and also do the math as you go. And, or predict what, I, what answer I'm gonna get as you go that's gonna help you learn. And we're gonna get 6,000, 1200 times five is 6,000 plus 2200 and 6,000 plus 2,200 is 8,200, okay, 8,200 miles. And so we've given you a word problem. I'm not just simply gonna ask you for an answer here. This will get you most of the points on this question, but I need to see it in a sentence to get full credit. So after five trips, she has 8,200 frequent flyer miles. Okay. Okay. So, peace out, people.